available in high definition. The Western Swing for the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series continues here at City Centre Airport in Edmonton. And one thing we've been able to count on with the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series road racing is drama and exciting finishes right to the checkered flag. When these big, bad stock cars come to the street circuits and road courses across the country, they don't mess around. Finesse and technique is matched up with bold and brash moves. It's a sprint to the finish, and it's the finishes that leave everyone gasping and wanting more. This is round number six of the 2008 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series presented by Sirius Satellite Radio from the runways of the Rexall Speedway. This is the Edmonton 100. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Edmonton, Alberta. I'm Dave Bradley, along with Billy Rose Jr. and Todd Lewis, as always, is trackside. Billy, this is always the highlight on a racing schedule. Well, Dave, the people of Edmonton love their racing, and they have once again come out in droves. When these NASCAR late models get fired up, these people rush to the grandstands so they can see the action. Well, the crowd got their money's worth last week when the tour was in Vernon. That's where Don Thompson Jr. captured his first win of the season with Scott Steckley finishing second. Steckley hounded him for the final few laps, but it was Don Thompson Jr. out distancing him, coming home with his first victory. Well, it was good to see Don Thompson get his first win of the year, but Steckley has three wins, a second, a fourth place finish. He's Mr. Consistency, and that's what's gonna win this tow truck in a box machine, his first championship. And there you see the Castro points chase with Steckley in front by commanding 111 points over Don Thompson Jr. Well, having said that, Thompson, Kennington, Ranger, and Gibbons have all had great seasons, but the consistency of the 22 car has just put them all in the back burner. In qualifying yesterday, the 19 of Brad Graham set the fourth quickest time. And Trevor Siebert here from British Columbia was third quick at 122.7. And the number seven Walmart Ubisoft Ford Fusion of Alex Tagliani was pretty quick throughout the session, but fell just a little bit short as his teammate Andrew Ranger from Roxton Pond, Quebec, scorched the field with a time of 1 minute 20.797. The 2007 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series champion was 8 tenths of a second faster than Tagliani, giving him his first pole of the season. Let's go trackside now to where Todd Lewis is standing by. Thanks, guys. Let's talk to the front row. Andrew Ranger starting on the pole position again. Andrew, a little unfinished business at this track from last year. Yeah, it was, uh, I was bad like in last year. We finished second year, but uh, we got a great car. The uh, car's been perfect all weekend. Uh, hopefully we can uh, touch the win today. Andrew Ranger will lead them off from pole position. Alongside on the front row, his teammate, Alex Tagliani, who, of course, has a number of laps at this racetrack, but in a champ car. Alex, you made a pretty good adjustment to these stock cars here in Edmonton. How do you look forward to that first corner, especially with Andrew? Well, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying my time in these cars. Obviously, I miss uh, open wheel for sure. Um, but uh, for this particular race, um, Dave Jacobs and the, the whole racing team, Alex Nagy, did a fantastic job. And hopefully we can bring uh, the two cars up front at the end of the race. Uh, it is going to be fun to watch the French Connection going into quarter one. And for 32 laps here in Edmonton, we'll get it started. And the green flag will wave when we come back. The sixth round of the 2008 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series on TSN is brought to you by Castrol Syntec. Unlock the power. By Mopar. Authentic performance. By Duplicolor, the premium brand leader in automotive paints, primers, and coatings. And by Dickies. Nominate your Canadian Worker of the Year. Well, the command to start your engines has been given here in Edmonton. 22 big V8 motors roar to life here at the road course. There's a look at the 14 Monte Carlo, James Van Domsler. He's a local boy out of Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta. And there's the front row owned by Dave Jacobs Racing. The team has had some bad luck, is now hoping to turn it around here in Edmonton. And we'll ride along on board today with Todd Nickel in the Chevrolet. And we'll take a look at the full Duplicolor starting grid again. The front row made up of Alex Tagliani and his teammate, 2007 NASCAR Canadian Terry Series champion Andrew Ranger. Trevor Siebert and Brad Graham make up row number two. Then a look back to your points leader, Scott Stackley in the 22 and J.R. Fitzpatrick in the 84. Row number four brings us DJ Kennington in the 17 and Mark Dilley drives the nine. And then row number five is Kerry Mix in the 02. Anthony Simone drives the 95. 
Row number six, Don Thompson Jr. fresh off his first win of the season and Peter Gibbons drives the number one Canadian tire Ford. Dave Whitlock's in the 39. Jason Hathaway drives the three. They make up row number seven. That'll look back to Ron Beauchamp Jr. in the 60 and Derek Lynch in the 77. James Van Dom Salar in the 14 and Todd Nickel in the six are in row number nine. And then Jared Whistle in the 44 and Jason White in the 21. Row number 11 has Ken Noon in the number 18, the Interstate Battery Chevrolet, and John Gaunt in the 12. And that's the field here in Edmonton. Well, what a great looking field of stock cars here in Edmonton today. Let's take a look at the Allied Steel Building's race analysis. The distance today is 32 laps or 100 kilometers. It's a 3.15, 14 turn road course. It's a 27 degree sunny day. And just because it's a temporary street circuit doesn't mean there won't be some great action inside curbs, outside curbs, and the man who can get it done all day long without breaking is gonna be the winner. So the drivers weave side to side to warm up their tires. Let's throw it to Todd. Updates, fellas, on a couple of cars that are dropping back in the field before the start. The 9 and the 39 of Mark Dilley and Dave Whitlock both had clutch problems, new clutches, but they failed yesterday. They made the change. They're going to the back. And the 02 of Kerry Mix had a problem with an intake gasket as well. He will fall to the back of the field, but does have a plan to get toward the front. He'll need a little help from the cautions, but he plans to be there at the end. I don't know about Kerry, but me as a driver, when I'm starting out the back with a strong horse like his, I'm going to dive through those slow cars right off the green flag, get as many passes as I can, and then hopefully some cautions will bunch it back up so I can get some more. Well, as Todd mentioned, you're, you're right. He will need a few cautions to help him out. A great aerial view of the Rexall Speedway. Here's the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series field. Lines up to take the green. We'll have six onboard cameras to help us follow all the action here in Edmonton. And Here's a look from inside the driver's compartment as all six get ready to go to green here in Edmonton. The Dodge Caliber SRT4 pace car pulls off down pit lane. The two Dave Jacobs racing cars lining up side by side. They head out onto the front stretch here in Edmonton looking for the green flag. A good field of cars in behind. There's Sean Gibbs waiting, holding the field. The green flag waves and we're underway. Watch this as they all fan out. This is a huge runway. There's all kinds of room. Look at that. Three, four, five wide back there. And down into corner number one. Everybody gets in cleanly as we're still three or four wide deep in the pack. Mostly two by two, though, as the front five start to stretch out. Single file. We got a car off. It looks like it's Kerry Mix. On board with Todd Nickel in that Norton Chevrolet. He knows his way around this course. He's got several races under his belt here before. Andrew Ranger jumps to the lead off pole with his teammate Alex Tagliani, a rookie here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. But as we mentioned, he does have a number of laps here in Edmonton in an open wheel car. But this is a vastly different feeling when you're in a stock car. Well, Dave Jacobs got to be very proud. Both his boys up front, Al Blanchard horsepower, seems to be getting the job done. How about Trevor Siebert, though, in the 69 car, holding off your points leader, the tow truck in a box, number 22 of Scott Stackley, as we ride on board with Peter Gibbons back in the four, or back in the Ford car for the road courses. That was a great shot of Peter going up through the gears of that Ford Fusion. But it is a pair of Fords, actually a trio of Fords, leading this field as you see a great field of NASCAR Canadian Tire Series cars. Racing on by our speed shot as Andrew Ranger comes off the final corner. He will lead lap number one here in Edmonton. Steckley has a run on Siebert, but Siebert's going to take defensive action. Wiggles in the braking zone. Uh, there's what's so much fun about this temporary street circuit that is actually on an airport runway. The runways are so wide, Dave, you can actually miss the apex of the corner and still come out fast because there's so much room to race. If that was a Mossport or a Shannonville or a Three Rivers, you'd be way off in the weeds. But here the runways are like 150 feet wide. But you saw in that shot how wide the runway is, and then it really funnels down into this tight section. Well, that's what keeps these guys on their toes. All of a sudden, we go from all that room to really not a lot of room. So it is still Scott Steckley stalking the 69 of Trevor Siebert. Steckley in the tow truck in a box. Number 22, you saw a plane landing in the background. This is an active airport. We seem to forget that sometimes. Well, it is a hot airport day for sure, and it's not the first time at this racetrack I've seen one land in the background. So the Walmart Ford of Alex Tagliani now looking to the inside of his teammate, down through the gears, um, and he's on the inside. What a textbook move. Got down into the gearbox first, third, second, got into the braking zone on the bottom, and his partner had no place to go but to watch it happen. But Andrew Ranger, smart racer in his own right, he knows there's plenty of time left here in the Edmonton 100, and there'll be time to get him back. 
That's for sure. Look at this. Give Trevor Siebert a, a nod there. You know, not a lot of races in these cars uh, and just doing a wonderful job on his home track. Well, you mentioned the last time, but did you see the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick? How wide he went way off that corner as he bangs over the curbs here, trying to get past the full throttle dodge of Brad Graham. Well, one thing about it, what I was talking about is you can miss the apex, but the other thing that happens, Dave, is you can keep the car wound up. It's all, it's all about momentum and how much speed you can carry through the corner. Great aerial view there of the leaders with Alex Tagliani leading the 27 of Andrew Ranger. We're two laps in here at Edmonton. Welcome back to the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Edmonton 100 from the Rexall Speedway. Three laps in the books. Andrew Ranger led the first one, collecting all important five bonus points. Now as his teammate Alex Tagliani has stretched out a bit of a lead in the Ubisoft Walmart Ford Fusion. And Trevor Siebert in that Ford Fusion is being hounded by our points leader. That's the 22 of Scott Steckley. But let's talk about what's going on up front. You got to remember, last year the 27 run away and hit on everybody and used up his equipment real early and allowed JR to take the race away from him. Right now, you got to think that Billy Burns is on the radio putting the reins on his driver, holding him back, and Tags is being able to, to lead the race. Well, there you see JR Fitzpatrick, the champion from last year's race. He did stalk the 27 of Andrew Ranger through the latter stages of last year's event and came home the winner. So you got to think it's uh, JR Fitzpatrick thinking he can do the same thing here this year. Oh, absolutely. He's just sitting here watching. Hey, there's the 22 sliding down the inside of Sieber. Scott Steckley will pick up third spot under braking as he is going to bring the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick with him. Siebert's down low in the blocking position, but here comes J.R. Fitzpatrick on the outside. Well, not the preferred line, but you got to remember, he's trying to get to the outside apex. Oh, and he did squeeze J.R. Out, out of the position. So J.R. Fitzpatrick had a decision to make the wall or the there spot, he and here he comes. Back hard on the outside. J.R. Fitzpatrick is going to get the spot this time. The young lion, J.R. Fitzpatrick, we've seen him go the outside at Mossport in the rain to get the lead of that race. And once again, he goes the big side. Down the inside again, here comes the full throttle energy drink, car 19. That's Brad Graham, he'll move up into fifth spot, but back on the inside comes the 69 of Trevor Siebert. You see Anthony Simone and Don Thompson Jr. tailing that pack with DJ Kennington and the Castrol Syntec Dodge as well. There is Kennington at the 17. Ah, DJ Kennington in the big green machine, just sitting there nice and patient, picking them off one at a time. The 12 of John Gaughan is down pit lane, and Todd, it doesn't sound like that motor's running. No, fellas, the car of Johnny Gaughan is not running. Crew went to work immediately under the hood to have a look, but it is off, and looks like John Gaughan's day might be ending early. Wow, two races in a row, because last week in Vernon, that motor overheated just as they finished the last lap at Vernon, British Columbia. There's the 69 of Trevor Siebert. We've been watching him, but he has been dropping back the last couple laps. J.R. Fitzpatrick up by, and then the 19 of Brad Graham, and now he's in the clutches of the 17 of DJ Kennington. Possibly something wrong. Well, I'll have to keep an eye on that for sure, but the race still is very exciting up front as J.R. Fitzpatrick is being haunted by the 19 of Brad Graham. There is J.R. Fitzpatrick as they continue to chase the two Dave Jacobs racing cars, plus your points leader, Scott Stackley. It's Alex Tagliani, your leader, with Andrew Ranger second, and Stackley has caught up to the back bumper of Ranger. Look at those cars float using the curbs. You know, what they do is they, they use that curb to loosen the car up. What it does, it transfers the weight to the right rear tire or the left rear, depending on which way they're going, and that allows the car to turn harder and sharper. Good run for the 19 of Brad Graham. Historically not very strong on the road courses, but problems on the 69 of Trevor Siebert as he falls back. Todd's got an update. Fellas, yeah, the 69 car of Trevor Siebert has lost a little bit of ground. Problem seems to have neutralized, though. Initially, he thought he had a tire going down, and that's why he lost a couple of positions. Hanging on right now, the 17 car of DJ Kennington having trouble getting by him. We'll see if Trevor Siebert can hang on. Well, there's a few things that could be going on. You know, that there's a difference in rubber compounds between the open-wheel cars and these stock cars. He could have had some build-up. You know, his setup from yesterday will be different today with air pressures and the amount of rubber build-up. Until he gets comfortable, he'll sit back and just let the car come to him. Well, it does look like he is settling in there now in the 69 car. As you see Brad Graham hopping the curb, but there is the four of Don Thompson Jr. into the 95 of Anthony Simone, and Don Thompson will move the home hardware number four up a position. Well, over the curb and through the door, and that's how we get the next spot. 
There's a good look at your points leader, the 22 of Scott Steckley. And if he is your favorite driver, you can go on the internet, log on to NASCAR.ca, click on the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series page, and vote for your favorite driver this year. Absolutely. Vote often and vote lots because they deserve it. They sure do. Andrew Ranger in the Walmart Tide, number 27, chasing his teammate, Alex Tagliani, as Tagliani leads his first NASCAR Canadian Tire Series race ever. The rookie doing a wonderful job here in Edmonton. Well, he's got lots of laps here on this configuration, but it wasn't an open wheel car. But, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a motorcycle, a snowmobile, or a stock car. Once you've got laps and know where the breaking points and passing zones are, you're good to go. Still feels kind of funny calling Tagliani a rookie, though. Yeah, for sure. The only guy to ever go wrestling with Paul Tracy. <laughs> There's the field coming by. You saw J.R. Fitzpatrick still in fourth spot. And how about that full throttle energy drink number 19 of uh, Brad Graham still inside the top five. Now with 26 laps to go here in Edmonton. A uh, great race shaping up as, as the 22 closes in on the 27. As again, I'll bet you right now, Bill Burns is still holding the reins back in that driver town. Hold on, young fella. Don't be letting it go yet. Would he be doing the same thing for Alex Tagliani trying to keep him back? Oh, for sure. Alex Nagy, the crew chief on the 7, a wily veteran and a great stock car driver in his own right. He'll, too, will be telling him, pace yourself, big fellow. Pace yourself. You saw John Gaunt, the 12th car, now back on track as they seems to have sorted the motor problems that had that 12th car stopped along pit lane. Good look at Andrew Ranger with Scott Steckley still giving chase and a pretty decent gap back to fourth place of J.R. Fitzpatrick. And how about Brad Graham still running inside the top five, but a car down pit lane and not sounding too hot is the 77 of Derek Lynch. And Todd's waiting for that car to come by. Yeah, that car sounds awfully rough, guys. Derek Lynch, the 77 Allied Steel buildings in our long pit road, rumbling. The crew going to have a look underneath the hood. I don't know if it's a plug wire off or some other problem. They're pointing at one of the cylinders now. It might be a simple thing, and Derek Lynch can get back out. Wow, sounding that loud, it's, it, it possibly could be a broken header, or if it's just missing really bad, it's kind of hard for us to hear it on the microphone like that, but probably a broken header or a broken rocker shaft. The number 12 Centennial Dodge Chrysler Jeep Dodge of John Gaunt pulls out of the way of the leaders as Alex Tagliani continues to lead here with a full crowd in attendance. We're still in the early going. We'll be back. Welcome back to the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series Edmonton 100 from the Rexall Speedway at the City Centre Airport. Montreal's Alex Tagliani's Ubisoft Walmart Ford Fusion leads here on lap 11 of 32. Again, you can see how wide the racetrack is. Two distinctly different lines coming off that corner. And it looks like Andrew Ranger has been able to close the gap on his teammate. Ranger has stretched out a little bit ahead of the 22. Tow truck in a box, Dodge Avenger. Uh, Scott Stackley and the 84 is coming as well. Well, J.R. Fitzpatrick turning the heat up a little bit on the 22 car and just pushing him towards the 27. There is a good look at your leader. Bouncing off the curb, says he. Twists up that Ford Fusion motor. Have a listen. Oh, Al Blanchard, don't watch this, Joe. Al Blanchard, the motor builder on the 27 and the 7. That thing was up in third gear for the longest time. That's like 7,500 RPM. But it seems to be working for Alex Tagliani so far. No hiccups on the Ford Fusion as Steckley has a little bit of luck on the 27 of Andrew Ranger, but he'll back off and tuck in behind. Yeah, while we're on board with Tagliani, he was able to stretch three, four, that's maybe even five car lengths on his teammate. Well, one car that's out, the 77. Derek Lynch just climbed out of the car after shutting off the motor. Derek, what was the problem? Did you find it yet? Yeah, it looks like we broke a piston or something. There's a hole outside uh, right in the block, so we lost the motor. So, short day here at Edmonton. Sorry for you. Derek Lynch will be back, though, in a week's time, guys, to try the road course again in Montreal. Tough break for the Allied Steel Buildings, folks, and Lynch will no doubt be back and stronger than ever in Montreal. Yeah, you got to think about this. We're on the West Coast, and we're heading for the East Coast. Yeah, and it's not too much time in between either. About a week, so these uh, teams really have to get things together and get back across the country. Now, there's Peter Gibbons in the, in the Ford Fusion. That is 11th position. Riding on board the number one Ford Fusion, the Canadian tire car of Peter Gibbons. And there's a good look at the top four now stretching a little bit of a gap 
back to the fifth place number 19 car of Brad Graham and how about the 22 car? People are starting to sit up and take notice of this driver. Of course, a 111-point cushion coming into this race, but Scott Steckley with Tow Truck in a Box, a full-time sponsor this year, and picking up Schick as an associate sponsor for Montreal. Well, good for them, but you got to remember, this young fellow, it's a family operation. You know, they, they really take care of their own stuff, but success breeds success. Bring on the sponsorship, a little more performance, and along comes more sponsorship. Absolutely. As we take a look at the ticker along the top of your screen, you can see where your favorite driver is running here with 19 laps to go in the Edmonton 100. We know that driver is comfortably in the top spot, the Walmart Ubisoft Ford Fusion of Andrew Ranger well in control. Well, he's really doing a great job, just barely grazing the curbs, not bouncing the car around too awful bad. A ways back in the field, you can see the guys being more aggressive as we go on board with his teammate. Let's have a look. continues to play the role of dog in the cat and dog game at the front. We'll take a look at where the western area drivers are fearing here in the Edmonton 100. You can see Jason White, the cruise in the dub, a and W number 21, started back in the 21st spot. He's picked up a spot. He's currently running in 20th with a decent job for White. There is Todd Nickel in the Norton number six. The Chevy Monte Carlo started in 18th. He's picked up a couple spots as well. Currently running in the 16th position. Good run for him. James Van Dom Solar in the 14th car. He's also picked up a spot and is running in the 16th spot. And the 44, Jared Whistle, is currently running in 18th. Look a little bit deeper in the field. The 60 and 02, Ron Beauchamp Jr. and Kerry Mix battling for 13th spot. Well, Kerry Mix has come all the way from deep in the field. He's now battling the 60 for 13th. There's two drivers that had some pretty bad luck, actually. Three drivers throw Dave Whitlock into the mix there. That's a pretty bad luck at our last stop at Vernon. So they're looking to turn things around and come charging up through the field. Well, Dave Whitlock, not known for his road race savvy, but he's doing a great job here today in Edmonton. And, of course, Dave Whitlock running the Dickey Sponsorship, and you can vote for the Canadian Worker of the Year. Just go online to canadianworkeroftheyear.ca and place your vote. As Ken Noon and the Interstate Batteries 18 is off the pace in the 84. Uh, J.R. Fitzpatrick goes around backwards. Caution flag flies for the first time here in the Edmonton 100. Wow, J.R. Fitzpatrick goes for a big slide. We'll have a look on the replay here, see if we can see what happened. The caution brought out for the stalled number 18 of Kent Noon, but have a look at this. We see Noon just stopped there, and JR is all by himself. Maybe there's some liquid down on the racetrack, and JR just goes around. Hopefully he didn't flat spot them tires. That's a pretty high-speed twist. Oh, look at that. There's a great replay. Do you hear the engine go up? Instant RPM. That means there's fluid on the racetrack. He was hard on the throttle, and around it went. And at a pretty quick pace, so hopefully no engine trouble as well on the 84 as the back tires were engaged, obviously, in gear as Noon gets pushed off by the wheel and engineering safety crew, so that's obviously something in a way in their mind. Hopefully they didn't twist that engine over backwards. Well, JR is a great little shoe, and he'll put the hurt on it for sure. He never gives up inside that race car. And so J.R. Fitzpatrick will take his spot in fifth as the other drivers had passed him under caution. There is Sean Gibbs with the cross flags marking the halfway mark here in the Edmonton 100. So we take a look at the home hardware midway update. We've had two leaders for two lead changes and a total of one caution so far for two laps. This is the first caution. Fastest lap of the day so far put in by Andrew Ranger with a minute 22.256. That's a pretty quick lap, but a little bit off its qualifying time. So we continue under caution here in Edmonton. Alex Tagliani continues the lead. High above the city center airport in Edmonton, Alex Tagliani leads round number six of the 2008 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series presented by Sirius Satellite Radio on TSN. The Dodge Caliber SRT4 pace car heads off down pit lane who are ready to work lap 18 as the cars line up single file here getting set for the restart. On board with Peter Gibbons in that Ford. Now, Peter Gibbons running a Chevrolet on the ovals and a Ford on the road courses. He believes there's more power in the Ford for the road course. There goes the Dodge Caliber SRT Ford down pit lane. Billy, what are the drivers thinking now as they head for their first restart of the afternoon? Well, excitement levels up. This is when everybody's closed up. You can gain some spots. Got to get through the gearbox real fast. 
don't miss a shift. Green flags back up, and they power down the front straightaway, heading for corner number one. Look at the drivers start to fan out. As they fan out, we're three wide back there in the field. DJ Kennington up on the outside. Here comes Scott, Scott Steckley in the tow truck in a box 22. He'll take over second spot. Wow, he diamonded that corner off real nice. Got the position just as smooth as silk. And so Trevor Siebert now tucked in behind the 27 of Andrew Ranger with the 84 and the 19 also in there. But your leader is still the 7 car of Alex Tagliani, the Walmart Ford Fusion. Number seven, the Jacobs racing car, now split by the points leader, Scott Steckley in the tow truck in a box 22. Well, his confidence level is so high. He's having such a great year. Remember back in the rain at Mossport, this was a brand new car at that time, and he finished fourth. The reason he finished fourth, he was not going to hurt that car in the rain. Really, being Steckley right now in that seat, you got to think he feels like he's Superman. Well, that's for sure. Hey, we're on board with Siebert. He's got a problem with the shifter. Look at him playing with that shifter. Siebert in the Lake Excavating Ford Fusion still running in the top five as he tries to grab a gear. And there you see the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick is going to go around. So problems on the 69 of Trevor Siebert. We'll have to keep an eye on that. It looks like it's stuck in third or maybe even fourth gear. Now he's heading down pit lane. So the Ford Fusion makes a move for the pits here as Trevor Siebert drops out of the top five. Look at this, side by side. We got more action back in the field. That's DJ Kennington getting passed by the 19 of Brad Graham. That's for fifth spot. Fifth spot, Don Thompson Jr. in the four. Mark Dilley in the nine is there as well. The first glimpse of the Dodge as he passed underneath the screen. There is Brad Graham and DJ Kennington giving chase. Got to give another nod to the job that 19 team is doing here today. But we'll have another look at this 69 car. You see, just drops off the pace trying to grab a gear. Watch, I'll show, I'll show you where this is. I'm going to draw a circle around the shifter. Watch it. Right there. See, the shifter's back there. He's trying to shift it. There. See? There. It's it in his hand. Off. There's no shifter left and hooked up in that car. Trevor Siebert grabs the nub to go down pit lane, so the crew inside the passenger window trying to get that fixed. Billy, what are they looking for here? Well, they're going to have to find the bolts or actually go to the toolbox and get two new 3-8 spine shifter bolts, stick it in there, and put it back together. Wow, that's got to be heartbreak for the 69 team. Having a great run here in the early going in Edmonton. But Trevor Siebert watching this race go away from him on pit lane. That's a good luck there of Brad Graham with DJ Kennington, Don Thompson Jr. in the three car. Jason Hathaway the snap on Dodge. Well, I still want to give a tip of the hat to the 19 car. Brad Graham, as we said before, not known as a great road racer, but he's having a whale of a ride here today. Riding on board with the Norton Monte Carlo. That's Todd Nickel and Kennington. Take a look down low. Under breaking into the back of the 19. Wow, Brad Graham gets a little fiberglass help. Whoa, Whoa. he's in the fence. He lost it, caught that tire wall, and a big off for the 19 to Brad Graham as he tries to get things going here, but smoke coming on from under the hood of the 19 as the caution flag flies. The Glencoe, Ontario native, stopped here in Edmonton after a hard hit into the tire barrier. Well, it was just unfortunate they got to racing, and they were in a kind of a, a real bad zone where the car was unloaded. DJ just barely touched him. Watch, here we are at the replay. Just barely touched him once. The, now the car is sliding, sliding, sliding. He's trying to catch it, and he just catches the tire barrier. That's a heavy lick in a pretty quick area of this racetrack. So some body damage, might be some front wheel damage to the 19 card. That, too, has to be heartbreak for that team. Oh, very unfortunate. There's the crew chief, Mike Knott. He'll be ready to assess the damage of that car and get his car fixed and back out on the racetrack. Here comes Graham to pit road. And so Graham trying to make his way down to pit lane. His bodywork rubbing on the left front tire of the Logos Automotive. Dodge Avenger as the wheel and engineering safety team goes to work on the tire wall. We'll take yet another look at it. Just a small, small touch. Very, very soft touch. But here we are. We're sliding. The car is just sliding. He's up in the marbles, and he can't get it gathered up in time. So some heavy fiberglass damage to the 19 car, Todd. Well, the bodywork is only one of the problems that the number 19 full throttle Fury car is going to take a look at. That steam coming out of the hood, and you can see it blowing on the windshield because the airbox got moved. They're worried about the radiator. There's body damage all along the left side. This could be a lengthy time on pit road for Brad Graham. Well, when you get into those tire barriers, the fiberglass flexes, the tires flex, and it just moves all the fiberglass and aluminum around. And it's a long run back to the pits here in Edmonton when you mess up on the other end of the track. 
that engine will heat up very, very quickly. Well, if he was dumping coolant out, that's for sure. The motor would just get hotter and hotter. Now, once they replace everything, they'll have to cool it down and go to work. There's Mike Knott. He's trying to get, get that aluminum air box out of the way so he can assess the radiator. Well, another driver that is off is the 69 of Trevor Siebert and Todd standing by there. Crew having a look inside the number 69 car. Trevor Siebert, the driver, is out. Felt the vibration yesterday, and it looks like it got the better of you today. Yeah, we had a, we put a brand new engine in before we came here, and we had a terrible vibration, and uh, the mirror actually snapped off inside the car yesterday, and a bunch of bolts fell out of the car, and uh, we took the engine out, sent it back to the engine shop. We had a little balance problem with the motor. Put the other one in. We were looking really good, but the gear shift broke off right where it, uh, right where it bolts into the transmission there, and... Uh, I guess that's the end of our day. Kind of sad. The guys worked so hard to get this motor in yesterday, and everything was looking really good. But it's the way it goes. I guess we'll go get him in Montreal. Tough break for Trevor Seabird here, guys, but he'll be back in Montreal. Back with more from Edmonton when we return. Alex Tagliani and his Dave Jacobs Ford leads the Edmonton 100 here at the City Centre Airport in Edmonton. The full throttle crew have made the necessary repairs to their Dodge Avenger as Brad Graham will join the field, but well down in 18th spot. Uh, very unfortunate. He was having a great run here today, but that's why they call it racing. As we ride on board with Todd Nickel, who sits in 14th, the highest amongst the Western competitors. The Dodge Caliber SRT4 pace car once again heads down pit lane looking for restart number two here on lap 24 from Edmonton. As the field starts to jockey for position, the green flag in hand of Sean Gibson and waves, so we're back underway. Wow, a couple guys laid back to get a good start, and there's the 22. He's taking a look on the seven. Look down here at the bottom. There's J.R. Fitzpatrick, got a whale of a start, and he brings with him the four and the three. Way up on the outside was J.R. Fitzpatrick. It didn't equal any positions for him as he tucks in behind the 22 with the four of Don Thompson Jr. He is up to fifth now. Great start for the home hardware Chevy. Well, now we got the teammates from, from Fitzpatrick Motorsports bumper to bumper. Now they're going to go after that 27 and hopefully get on by. But the winner in Vernon, the four of Don Thompson Jr. with a great restart. He pulled along the three car, the snap-on Dodge of Jason Hathaway, but... Don Thompson Jr., we have to remember, too, that car was brand new in Mosport, and he almost won there. Yeah, a lot of guys built new road course cars for this season, and that one he calls Road Hammer, and he's all over his teammate. To the back bumper under, breaking his caution, flies here in Edmonton, and it's the 44 of Jared Whistle off in the fence in turn number one. So once again, the field slows here in the Edmonton 100. As there the caution flag flies, we'll try and find Jared Whistle there in the 44. You can see pretty torn up race car. Now we got some severe damage on the rear of the 44 car. He's hit something very hard. Yeah, grabbing it along as the pace car will pick up the leaders. There you see the fiberglass damage. It looks like some rear end damage as well to that 44 car. So it looks like Jared Whistle will have to go to the pits to make some repairs take another look at it. Oh, he was outside chasing the boys as well. He missed the corner altogether, locked it up, turned it backwards into the tire wall. The only thing that saved him there was a tire wall. If that was a concrete wall, the damage would have been a lot worse. But Jared Whistle dumping it hard into turn number one, and it just didn't work out for him. So the rookie in the number 44 will try to make it back to the pit lane to make necessary repairs as we continue under a third caution here in Edmonton. Well, you look on the side of the car and it says Frontier Fabrication. And I'll tell you right now, as being a builder myself, it's going to take a lot of fabrication to get that car straightened out. Absolutely. It's on another plane coming into land here at Edmonton. This is a working airport, the city center airport, that closes down half of it to host the IRL series, as well as the IndyCar series, I should call it now, as well as the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. And Alex Tagliani taking a little break here under caution uh, and Edmonton as the crews look on 25 laps down welcome back to round number six of the 2008 NASCAR Canadian Tire Series on TSN as we get set to restart once again here in the Edmonton 100 and the Dodge Caliber SRT4 pulls down pit lane right on board with Todd Nickel now as he chases the Mopar Dodge of Ron Beauchamp Jr. J.R. Fitzpatrick tucked in behind the Walmart Ford Fusion of Andrew Ranger as the field bunches together. And once again, the green flag waves. We're back underway. 
Jr. Fitzpatrick gets a great jump. That's two restarts in a row that Andrew Ranger has labored. It looks like Andrew Ranger stumbled a little bit. The gap was huge back to uh, uh, Ranger from Scott Steckley, and Jr. Fitzpatrick was given a gift there. Well, you know, the, the guys that tune these race motors all pick a different jet and a different size accelerator pump. And sometimes if you get too big a pump in it, when he jumps in the gas, the motor will stumble. On board now with Peter Gibbons and the Canadian Tire Ford Fusion sitting in eighth spot, chasing the snap-on tools, Notch of Venture of Jason Hathaway. And there is J.R. Fitzpatrick now running in third, chasing Alex Tagliani and Scott Steckley. Well, he's been sideways, backwards, over the curves and everything else, but he's still running really strong. Here comes Ranger, though, back to the inside of the 84. These two battled on the last lap of the last race here in Edmonton, and it was J.R. Fitzpatrick who came out on top, taking the win. This time, Andrew Ranger gets the better of the 84, but here comes J.R. back underneath him. Wow, that wasn't very polite. He muscled his way through there and just literally slammed the door shut on the way through. J.R. had to pedal not to get hit. See DJ Kennington and Anthony Simone in the 95 goes around. He backs it into the tire wall as John Nichol goes around. Simone into the wall and stop, but no caution just yet as the field continues around. Well, we take a look at the replay, and there he goes. He's off the front bumper of the 0-2 carry mix. Carries in a hurry. Yeah, carry mix knows it's time to go. It's under 10 laps now as Anthony Simone in the Crown Modular 95 gets things going. He's now in 16th spot. The 0-2 of Kerry Mix is up in 10. There you can see another chance to vote for your favorite driver here in just go online to NASCAR.ca and then click on the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series page. Well, DJ Kennington still marching on with that 17 Dodge. Yeah, running solidly in the top five now, but it is still Alex Tagliani as we ride on board with his teammate, Andrew Ranger. Up through the gearbox, Ranger doing a well. Yeah, there you see the snap-on number three of Jason Hathaway well outside the group there as he slides back. So possibly problems on the three. Hathaway, he's... Looks like he's a little bit off the pace. Well, we'll have to keep an eye on that. He's either missed the gear, broke something, or he just missed the corner altogether. Don Thompson Jr. continues to track behind the 17 of DJ Kennington. Looks like Hathaway is going to stay on the racetrack and not go to pit lane. So whatever it is, could just be that Hathaway missed his points with three laps to go now in the corner number one. Well, we got the Ford Fusion up front, the Dodge in second place, and another Ford, and then the Chevrolet of J.R. Fitzpatrick. And we are getting reports on the three-car pathway as the 0-2 of Kerry Mix and the 9 of Mark Dilley battle side-by-side -side in through that corner. But whatever the problem was on the snap-on tools, Dodge Avenger is A-OK. -okay. So Jason Hathaway getting the green light for the final three laps here in Edmonton. Well, three to go. It's time to everything you've saved all day. You better put up on the table right now. And it'll be interesting to see how much Andrew Ranger and J.R. Fitzpatrick has saved over the course of this race as Andrew Ray, or excuse me, J.R. Fitzpatrick continues to battle. Look at how loose that race car is. Look at that 7,500 heading for 8,000 RPM on that tag. D.J. Kennington in the Castrol Syntec Dodge Avenger under braking closes the gap on the 84. There's the home hardware Chevy of Don Thompson Jr. as well. Still chasing the Walmart Ubisoft number seven of Alex Tagliani. Well, Alex Tagliani has put a clinic on here today. I can't imagine him not winning this race, but I tell you, Alex Nagy in there talking to him, talking to him, nice and easy, hit your marks, don't abuse the race car. Andrew Ranger has closed the gap on the 22 of Scott Steckley. Steckley looks like he's just maintaining there in behind the seven cars. They head down into the braking zone, drop some gears, and then hang a right here, still chasing the seven of Alex Tagliani. Look at how smooth that seven car is. Well, Steckley in second place there is just driving the wheels up. You see that car wiggle under braking going into that last corner. This is going to get intense. We'll be back with more after this. Alex Tagliani took the lead from his teammate on lap two, and he's never looked back. The Montreal area native looks to capture his second win of his pro racing career. He has one win in champ car, now looks to take the Edmonton 100 here in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. And Dave, what's so cool about this, this is in front of his peers, the guys that wouldn't give him a ride. He's here, and he's winning in front of his old crowd. And he wasn't even expecting to be in a stock car this year. They put this deal together at the last minute, 
And now he's leading here in Edmonton. This is the battle for second. Andrew Ranger takes a look down low on the 22 of Scott Steckley. Boy, those cars up. wiggling hard under braking, Dave. These guys are going at it. This is the best race on the racetrack. Andrew Ranger is pushing. Look at him bounce off the curb up to the back of the 22. Stretching a lead over the 84 of J.R. Fitzpatrick, but still well in control is the 7 of Alex Tagliani. Will Ranger get close here on the last lap? Going into corner number one. No, he'll back off. Oh, look at this. He's sliding it under brakes. He's got the back end locked right up. He was pedaling hard. He's to the bumper. He's taking a look. Scott Steckley must be watching the mirror in that 22-year points leader trying to hang on to second spot here in Edmonton as they chase the leader, the seven of Alex Tagliani. There he is up the inside. He's stuck through. And there's the 22 going right back at him. Back underneath goes Scott Steckley, and he'll take second position back. Andrew Ranger got underneath, but overcooked it. Now Steckley is crossways off the corner. The confidence of Scott Steckley showed there. Not giving up. He allowed the 27 to slide through. He did the crossover, and now he's going to cover the spot. Nice and narrow coming through there. He knows there's only one way around. Scott Steckley going into a sword fight with a road race ace as the car squat down under braking. And he's holding up his end of the bargain just fine against Andrew Ranger. As your points leader continues in second spot, Ranger is running out of precious spaces to get by. One more time down through the, they're sliding off the corner. Now it's a horsepower race down the front stretch. And it looks like Alex Tagliani as we ride on board with the Walmart Ubisoft Ford Fusion off the final corner. He's going to win the first time in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series. Steckley holds off Ranger for second as last year's champ comes home in third. Fitzpatrick, Kennington, Thompson, Hathaway, and Mix round out the top ten. So what a finish here in Edmonton. There is Tagliani's crew chief, Alex Nagy, talking to his driver as he celebrates with some donuts his first ever NASCAR Canadian Tire Series win. And Todd is standing by with Nagy. Todd? Crew chief for Alex Tagliani. Alex Nagy accepting congratulations. Boy, this team has come a long way in a short period of time. Congratulations. Thanks, Todd. Yeah, we have. Uh, you know, on a road course like this, it's not bad to have a driver like Alex Tagliani behind the wheel for you. It makes me look pretty good. So, you know, we got to get better in oval tracks. But right now for Walmart and uh, Ubisoft and Children's Charities and M&M's and Kodak, we couldn't be happier. So uh, this is going to get them excited and we're going to get moving forward for the last half year. Alex Nagy's first win as a crew chief. We'll talk to the winner when we come back to Edmonton. Welcome back to Edmonton. We are at Victory Podium, and Alex Tagliani is climbing out with the checkered flag in hand to celebrate his first win in the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series, and you betcha up on the roof to take a brow and celebrate here in Edmonton, out of open-wheel racing this season, but Alex Tagliani on top here in stock car racing. Alex, come on down. How good does this feel to get this victory here in Edmonton at this track? where you were in open wheel racing for so many years, now a winner in stock cars. Uh, well, I was not uh, planning on going stock car racing at the beginning of uh, 2008, but uh, the whole Jacobs Racing team have been uh, very supportive, and uh, this is a thank you to them because they worked day and night to prepare this, this car because we give them no lead time. Uh, before we decided to come and bring Walmart, the Victory Lab program, Tide, Ubisoft, Kodak, m and on board. We had to go somewhere and, uh, you know, Alex Nagy joined the, the, the team as a crew chief very late and uh, he gave me a great car. So this is thank you for uh, the Jacobs Racing Team. Smile on the face says it all. Congratulations, Alex Tagliani. So Alex Tagliani finishes up with a few more interviews in victory lane. We'll take a look at the final results here in the Edmonton 100. DJ Kennington rounding out the top five. Jason Hathaway coming home in seventh. Kerry Mix, after charging from near the back of the pack, comes home solidly inside the top ten. Todd Nickel, top of the Western runners. And Jason White in the rookie battle in the 21. He's battling Alex Tagliani. He'll come home in 15. And we'll take a look now at the Mopar Fast Five, the top finishing Mopar drivers. That's great. Mopar puts a lot of money into this program, and it's a nice paycheck at the end of the day for these Mopar drivers. And Todd standing by with our top dodge. Scott Steckley, it's not a victory, but it's another podium finish and a stranglehold on this championship right now. Yeah, it's not a victory, but uh, to finish second to Alex Tagliani, it's, it's great. Um, I'm so happy to 
finishing the podium again. It, our crew does an awesome job. Uh, Got to thank Tow Truck in a Box, all our sponsors. It's just, it's been a great year. We just can't seem to do anything wrong. We just got to keep it going. The momentum continues for Scott Steckley, and he continues to strengthen that lead in the standings, fellas. Oh, he better touch some wood after saying something like that. He does stretch his points lead here in the Castro point standings. Now a cushion of 131 points over Don Thompson Jr. DJ Kennington still in third spot, but they have to hope for some bad luck on that 22 car if they're ever going to catch him this season. Todd standing by now with Andrew Ranger. Andrew, not the finish you wanted, but a podium finish nonetheless for you. Oh, uh, definitely. It's not the finish I want. Uh, I almost win last year here, and again, I finished third. Uh, but it's a great track, you know, like I was working good. It's just uh, then the restart, I got a lot of problem to start and have a good start. It's there where Stickley passed me and almost Fitzpatrick passed me. And I was a little bit pissed about it. But uh, you know what? The crew did a great job. You are here this weekend, one and third. And it's good for the podium. It's good uh, for everybody and the team. And we are going to Montreal and try to win the race. You can see the motivation in Andrew's face headed to Montreal for the next event, guys. But that was a terrific pass repass by Steckley and Andrew Ranger in the closing moments of this one. It was quite a dice he had with Scott Steckley and we'll take another look at this in the dying moments of the Edmonton 100. Wow, the narrowest part of the racetrack. These guys were going right at each other for this last lap. The crowd had to eat it up. And Alex Taglietti stepping onto the top Alex step of the podium for the first time in his young stock car racing career. Or even forgets to take the trophy from the trophy girl here in Edmonton as Adam Ross, the NASCAR Canadian Tire Series PA announcer, goes on with his interview with Tags. The Edmonton 100 has been brought to you by Castrol. It's more than just oil. It's liquid engineering. By Dodge. Grab life by the horns. By Allied Steel Buildings, the leading, most trusted brand of steel building. And by ISC Racers Tape, designed with the racer in mind. Well, what a great show here in Edmonton. There's the top three. Unbelievable finish. The next race, the first and third place finishers are going home. It's the Napa 100 from Montreal. It should be a good one as they celebrate with champagne here in Edmonton from all of us at James Robinson Associates. We'll see you across the country.